uh, welcome to this lecture on uh, FSM plus data path. So, we will try to illustrate some of the concepts, uh, the design, the thought process behind the design implementation, but through a couple of examples. So, FSM plus data path, FSM stands for recall finite state machine. And uh, data path is a collection of components which uh, will st which can store data, which can move data, route uh, the data, which can operate on the data. So, uh, the data path will consist of registers, multiplexers, uh, ALUs, etcetera, decoders and so on and so forth. Okay. So, this uh, some of the components on the data path like register multiplexers spe specifically multiplexers have control signals based on which uh, the routing gets decided that is the configuration of data path is achieved by controlling some uh, most, most of these particular components on data path. And the job of creating generating this control signal appropriate values is of the finite state machine. So, finite state machine is going to work as a controller of the data path. Okay. So, finite state machine uh, in the, the first courses on digital systems, uh, most of us have enough familiarity with finite state machine. So, here uh, the finite state machine will be studied in the context of data path, how it controls the data path and uh, the typical uh, like examples of custom computing machines or general purpose computing machines will be illustrated in the course of these lectures. So, let me focus mostly on the example a very well known example that of GCD greatest common divisor. Let us for the sake of simplicity of the presentation we will I will assume that we are given two numbers x and y both non negative. Let us say we are given the numbers 1 1 2 and number say 35 yeah. and we want to compute a GCD of this uh, using a synchronous uh, sequential system and that synchronous sequ sequential system would be designed using the, the methodology or notion of uh, FSM and data path. Let us see uh, in the thought typical thought process which one comes first and how does the rest follow. So, let us first uh, recall the GCD example. So, here we have these two non negative numbers uh, stored in x and y loaded into x and y at the beginning of the computation. Then let us see what would be ha happening at every clock cycle. So, before I write down the pseudo code let us go through this. Uh, standard uh, like you know standard computation which most of you would be familiar with. So, uh, noticing that x is bigger than y we can do this so called modulo operation, but instead of doing the modulo operation which is uh, what we do in case of write when we write a program with the help of powerful libraries C program with the help of C libraries or whatever which you have remainder modular arithmetic I mean remainder function available. Instead, here we will take a more simple approach of repeated subtraction rather than doing the integer division and finding the remainder and the quotient. Okay. So, here what we will do is we will subtract, subtract this x uh, y from x and uh, the result we will put it back in x. So, that gives us 77 which is 112 minus 35 and 35 will remain over here. So, what we did in this first clock cycle was so called a subtract like operation. Okay. I will just call, call it quote unquote subtract. In the next clock cycle again we notice that x is bigger than y. So, again I repeat this step of subtracting y from x which gives me 42 and 35. So, once again 
in this clock cycle I issue the command to this synchronous machine subtract. I am deliberately using the words issuing a command that is what we will see the job of the controller would be to issue commands to the data path which is actually uh, doing the computation of the data as well as movement of the data. So, here we get 7 and 35 okay, 42 minus 35 7 and 35 remains as it is in here. Now, x is now less than y or x is not greater than y. Uh, so, we have to do the swap operation. So, that uh, we get bigger number on this side, smaller on that side and we can process again. So, here is uh, at the result of swapping 35 comes here into x and 7 is loaded into 7 moves to y. Here now we are again ready back in the family situation of doing the subtract. So, we get 27 7 similar again subtract 21 7 14 7 subtract again 7 7. Now, we have situation that uh, now still okay, x is uh, greater or equal to y. So, we will again sub subtract we get 0 7. Now, we see that x is less than y. So, we, we uh, swap. So, here we say swap and as a result of swap we get 7 here and 0 over here. Once we get 0 in the position in the register uh, variable y, then we stop the process. Sorry. Okay. So, here you notice the last step. So, we were here say some time ago at the step 7 7, 7 resulted from 14 minus 7. So, 7 7. Now, we have uh, I mean x is still greater or equal to y. So, we do not have x less than y uh, uh, a situation for swapping. So, we subtract. So, 7 minus 7 is 0 and 7 remains over here, but now we have x less than y. So, uh, we swap 7 comes over here 0 comes over here. Now, any subtraction repeated subtraction is not going to help and anyway this is the end of this process and uh, which is indicated by uh, noticing y, 0 in the uh, in the in the variable y. So, whatever is in variable x will be the result of this G computation which is the G C D. So, G C D of 1 1 2 comma 35 is found out to be 7 computed to be 7. So, this is the algorithm a very simple algorithm which works in terms of using the very simple hardware which does comparison which does uh, subtraction and which does swapping movement of data. Uh, so, we will we will realize this GCD algorithm by probably uh, like you know wasting number of machine clock cycles doing in a very simple way, but using a very simple hardware which we can illustrate very easily and uh, associated data path FSM concepts also. So, now let me abstract uh, let me capture this uh, what we just discussed in terms of a pseudo code here there is a loop some kind of iterative computation and in every loop we check if we already have a result or not that is if y happens to be 0 then we know that result is ready. Then we realize that result is ready where in x. Okay. Else if the result is not ready that is if y is not equal to 0 then uh, we check whether there is a reason there is a need to swap or not whether x is smaller than y which will make it uh, like you know which will induce us to swap. So, if x happens to be less than y then we will swap x and y. Okay. Else, else what we will do is uh, we will do a subtract operation. The subtract operation operation will uh, have this result that in the x in the location uh, storage of x we will load x minus y the result of the subtraction and y will be updated with y will not be updated y will remain as it is. x will be updated with the result of subtraction x minus y and y will be as it is. So, this is the subtract 
operation. This is where we swap and this we keep on doing in a loop. Okay. So, do not think of it as a C program sequential program, it is a uh, description uh, with say uh, like you know using if and else involving condition checks and also involving some operations uh, like swap x and y and this uh, subtraction operation and then movement of loading uh, certain variables with appropriate results. So, from this it will become fairly clear what will be the data path, uh, what will be the components on the data path to support this kind of algorithm. Wherein in every clock cycle we will have every typical clock cycle of computation we will have uh, all this this logic being implemented. So, uh, what do we need on the data path? We will need obviously to store variables we require storage locations, flip flops we are going to we have been focusing assuming synchronous computing. So, uh, edge triggered flip flops. So, let us say this register called x and this register for y this indicates they are edge triggered registers. Okay. What else do we need? We need uh, we need some a subtractor, we will require a subtractor which will subtract y from x. So, this is say let us say a specialized ALU which is only used for configured for subtraction. So, this signal is say I call it x minus y uh, this is the name I give it because I know it is going to carry the, uh, the value x minus y. We also require comparator. less than comparator to which we are going to have uh, feed in the input x and input y. If x is less than y, we will have a true high value, value boolean value 1 here or boolean value 0 if it is not the case. So, this I denote this signal output signal by x l t y x I read it as x less than y this is the 0 1 signal, these are two data items, two integers. What else do we require? We require an equality checker uh, with a 0 checker whether this y input to this equality checker is 0 or not. So, again this is a boolean output I denoted by I call y eq 0. y q 0. Plus as I mentioned other than registers and uh, ALUs, comparators and so on, we also require multiplexes because data path is basically a collection of these components you know where through which at in which data is stored or data is operated upon or data is rooted. So, one important uh, kind of component that we are still missing over here is multiplexes. Multiplexes are almost invariably there in every kind of data path okay. omnipresent things other than registers the uh, multiplexes will be more or less always there. So, what kind of multi where do we require multiplexes? Uh, we notice that uh, like there is in different situations either we depending on situation either we, uh, we swap contents of x and y or we re load x with x minus y and we let y remain with as it is. Okay. So, we will require a multiplexer uh, to which one of the input is x itself and the other input is x minus y and this the output of this multiplexer will be available to be loaded into x eventually. I am deliberately still not completing this path because we will realize that we will need something more for the algorithm to start. Okay. So, we will require a multiplexer which based on a select signal will either root x. So, uh, will either root x minus y or 
in case of swap uh, in case swap is required we will root y ok. So, uh, just uh, like we will have a more clear picture of this, but just we realize the need that x might have to be load depending on different conditions x would have to be loaded with either with y in case of swap or with x minus y. So, we require a multiplexer which will whose output will be rooted eventually to a register x. Similarly, for y we will require a multiplexer which will either root x or y towards y, the y register again. So, some multiplexers are required. Let us see a couple of uh, things that we have missed out so far. Let us go back to the we just basically I just showed you the main loop of this computation which has something like if y equal 0 then something else if else if x less than y then swap else subtract and so on. But uh, before we one settles down into the loop and input has to be loaded into the registers right. So, we will have uh, in certain state this system will be doing this uh, computation in every clock cycle. Okay. But before that there will be some kind of uh, state wherein we say like supposing we notice a signal called start then we uh, then we load into x an input meant for it and load into y an input meant for y. Okay. So, this is something extra that we are going to require because of which we will have we will need a multiplexer over here uh, to which one of the uh, inputs is the in input from outside x in or the other input is this either y in case of swap or x mi or x x minus y in in some the other situations. So, we will require and the output of this multiplexer will be ready as the input to this x register okay. and this x is sorry x is going over here and and some other places. Let me draw it neatly again. If we have fair idea of how many components should we require. So, I think it will help me draw it more neatly. This is x, x is uh, driven by output of this multiplexer, where one of the input is something that is coming from outside and the other input is as we said it is the result of the multiplexer output of the multiplexer to which one of the input is x minus y and the other input is y in case of swap. Okay. Similarly, for y will have an in uh, multiplexer driving the register y or like uh, red at the input of register y. One of the choices input choices to the multiplexer will be y in which is the input coming from outside. The other one will be the output of a multiplexer would be either the in case of swap y is to be loaded with x or it should remain as it is. Okay. So, this is my x signal, this is my y signal. Okay. This here if I allow a bit of clutter I can draw this y from carrying the signal from here over here, this x from going from here to here, y going from here to here and so on. 
but I, this is clear enough. X minus is generated by an ALU where the input at the plus terminal is x and the input at the minus terminal is y, x is coming from here, y is coming from here. Else we also mentioned that we would, we would need a comparator less than to which the inputs are x and y and output is x l t y and an equality checker whether something is 0 or not to which the input is y and output are denoted by y e q 0. So, let us root this. Uh, yeah. So, this is x goes to all these places. Y Yeah, that seems to be more or less the data path, but uh, like I mean this does not uh, describe everything completely because we are not describe what will be the control signals to this multiplexers that is what will be the select signal based on whose value whether this either this or this gets rooted. Similarly, the select signal to this multiplexer this is what we yet uh, we have we are yet to describe a multiplexer here. This we know this ALU is going to do subtraction. So, there is no control to be specified here. We assume that x and y resistors are going to be ready for loading all the time in every clock cycle. So, no further enable signal is required here. In general we do use it, but in this example it will turn out that we do not need it. Okay, so, let me start like you know fixing some more details. So, let us identify this uh, multiplexer inputs by the stand in the standard way. So, if this select input is 1, then x in is going to be loaded into x. Similarly, if the select input here uh, for this multiplexer is 1, then y in is going to be loaded over here. So, I denote this input port of this multiplexer by 1, because this which uh, it indicates that when the select input is 1, this one will be rooted at the output. So, this one will be 0 and this one will be 0. Okay. And I, I call this select signal appropriately load x in. Okay, because its purpose is to, to facilitate loading of x in into the register x at the end of that clock cycle. Similarly, this one I call it load y in. Okay. Then what do I call, let us look at this particular multiplexer. What should we call the select input uh, to this multiplexer? This I name swap. Okay. So, if swap is 1, then I must allow the root this y root y over uh, in a way so that y can be uh, kept ready at the input of x. So, when swap is 1, y will be rooted eventually to x. So, this is the input num port number 1 and this is the port number 0. Okay. So, this select input this multiplexer is going to be called a control signal y. Similarly, this one, this one also I will call it y, uh, call it the same, the name swap. So, when swap is 1, then y is going to be loaded with x. So, x will be rooted 
over to uh, like y and if not swapping then y will be rooted eventually to y. This multiplexer is for the input situation that is when we are loading the fresh new inputs ready in inputs into the x and y that is at the start of the computation before the loop begins. And this 0 input to this multiplexer this and this are going to be used in that uh, in the looping computation in the computational loop. Okay. So, this is how generally we will we'll kind of once we take a st uh, we build the inventory of the data path components we figure out which data path components we require and how they are to be connected with each other and to wire them up. Then we start figuring out the control signals that are required to control this data path at different times with different control signals. So, it is not going to be any magic. Uh, so, we need something which will generate appropriate values of this control signals namely load x in, load y in, swap. Yeah, I mean such control signals have to be generated by, by a sequential circuit by uh, itself and that sequential circuit will be a finite state machine typically. So, that data path might look like a bit of clutter, but uh, it is quite easy to uh, capture it in, in the syntax of Verilog. So, let me try that now. So, what we are doing over here in the data path is uh, we are specifying that the registers in the data path are x and y. Now, I specify how the registers are going to be updated at the end of every clock cycle that is at the act at the triggering edge of the clock the positive edge of the clock. So, the logic for now first I will describe the logic for updating register x. So, the logic is as follows. If we notice that we saw in the previous just while ago that uh, there is a multiplexer here and when we have uh, when we need to take the input and uh, register it latch it into x we we generate we, uh, we assert this particular uh, control signal we need to assert this control signal load x in and similarly load y in has to be asserted. So, and when that happens x in is going to be loaded into x and y in is going to be loaded into y. So, we will assume that somebody has helped us assert that particular signal load x, load x in as well as the signal load y in. So, if load x in is asserted then x is to be loaded with x underscore in ok. Else, else again let us look at this. If load x in is not asserted then it is definitely not the, the situation at the beginning before the computation begins that means to be are likely to be in the computational loop. There the root to x register x is going to be going to be uh, like through this input port of this multiplexer and uh, what we what will be loading into x will be the result of this particular multiplexer which either would be y or x minus y which would depend on swap ok. So, if swap is equal to 1 then will x will be loaded in that situation uh, with y and if swap is equal to 0 then x minus y the result of this ALU will be rooted at the input of x. So, else if swap has been asserted then x is to be loaded with y else x is to be loaded with x minus y. 
this x minus y is like uh, I am using the power of Verilog, the right hand side is x minus y. In fact, implicitly this means that there is a arithmetic logic unit a subtractor which will be subtracting x and y and the result of that subtractor is going to be kept ready at the input of x. So, this statement captures th uh, the use of this ALU as well as the use of this multiplexer. Okay. So, that is the power. So, power of Verilog is also being illustrated here. So, this is this is this if else statement which also has another nested if else describes the uh, the way x is updated the register x is updated. Similarly, the way register y is updated is almost the same if load y in which is the input to the multiplexer is uh, asserted is equal to 1 then y is to be loaded with the fresh input from outside else if else what is to be loaded in y the other option the other signal which is the, again the result of this multiplexer which is controlled by the control input swap. So, if swap is 1 then y is going to be loaded with x else y is going to be loaded with y itself. swap y okay. else I can say y y and uh, but uh, with the help of I mean uh, this Verilog synthesizer will find is redundant we do not need to say it it will understand it automatically so, we do not need to say it redundant it is not wrong it is redundant. Okay. So, this is the main part of the logic of update of x and y. Okay. So, try and connect it up with uh, multiplexers and arithmetic logic unit and uh, so the multiplexers are kind of implied by this uh, if else statements. So, there will be a multiplexer with, with the control input load x in there is a role of multiplexer with the control select input swap is a role of multiplexer with select input load y in and another multiplexer with again the swap as the select input. Then there is a role of this uh, subtract ALU, subtractor ALU. I mean in this behavioral statement we it, it is implicit that we are making use of the subtractor comp data path component and the result of that is to be rooted to x. Uh, using appropriate multiplexer input. Okay. So, that is swap is 0 then x minus the result of the subtractor is going to be rooted to x. So, Verilog synthesizer is going to map this to a uh, major portion of the data path that we just drew. So, so, with the help of this Verilog we have a fairly like you know a text based and fairly unambiguous description of how the data moves, how the data is uh, computed, I mean how is data is processed through subtractors and so on so forth, how the movement of data is controlled by the multiplexers. Now, what remains? Obviously, the major thing that remains is to understand how these control signals are to be generated and who is going to generate that. So, so, what we need is logic for control signals load x in, load y in, control signal swap. So, the entity that does this is called a controller and the output of this controller are these control signals which are being used to drive the data path. So, in particular load x in, load y in and swap. We missed one uh, signal that we would like, we would like a, a signal to indicate to the outside world to the uh, I mean to the external system I mean subsystem uh, to the external universe 
whether the uh, result of the computation is ready. So, I believe a controller can help me do that. So, let me assume that controller also generates a signal called ready. Okay. What are the inputs to the controller? Obviously, the clock. Clock is um, one of the important inputs to the controller. I mean, it is a, it's a syn synchronous sequential system by itself. So, the clock will be input. Then other inputs to the controller are, we assume an input from external sources, which triggers this computation to begin. So, when start input is asserted, then the x and y resistors are to be loaded with the data available at the input ports of this module of this design unit. So, this is an example of an external uh, input. Also, sometimes the some signals from the uh, data path are also input to the controller. So, for in this case we realize that the comparator is output which, which says whether x is less than y and the 0 checkers output whether which says whether y is equal to 0 are also going to be used in controlling this data path. Uh, so, we are just about to uh, discuss the controller. The controller as we just said uh, would have generate this control signals which are input to the uh, data path and also controller would make use of the status signals from the data path say x less than y, y equal to 0 as input. Other than the input from the external sources for start for triggering the uh, system to do the computation and a clock because very typically this controller is going to be a, a synchronous finite state machine. Uh, further the controller also would generate output for the external world okay, say ready indicating that computation is complete. So, let us look at the internals of a controller. It will turn out that we can make this controller I mean uh, quite often this controller is going to be very simple. In fact, in this particular case as uh, an illustration will show a controller which is purely combinational. It is not even a an FSM with multiple states, a single state FSM which is essentially a purely combinational logic. So, the controller is going to be a single state uh, finite state machine which is essentially purely combinational. This is the state which is the in which the controller loops performing different iterations, multiple iterations of that GCD computations which involves essentially swapping and subtracting. The highest priority is given to the input signal start. So, the controller decides looking at start whether start is uh, has, uh, has been asserted or the start is deasserted. Okay. This is the situation uh, when start is asserted. When start is ass asserted, the, the controller's job is to uh, assert the control signals load x in and load y in. Right. So, and uh, after it does that, it will go back to the same state. So, it just simply asserts this control signals load x in and load y in when the start signal start input signal is found to be asserted is found to be high. On the other hand, when the start signal is found to be uh, deasserted, that means it is a uh, like it means the situation is like uh, that we are ins already inside a computational loop and we should be doing things based on uh, the result of based on the status input from the comparator. The status input from the comparator says x is less than y or it could tell us that x is not less than y. Okay. Either this condition holds or that condition does not hold. I, in both the cases, we will stay back in the same state, like go, but different kind of control signals would be uh, generated, different values of control signals will be generated. In particular, if x is less than y, we know the contr controller's job is to tell the data path that it must swap x and y. So, the swap signal is asserted. 
in response to noticing that x is less than y and if x is not less than y then swap signal is deasserted. By the way, I am a bit casual with the notation sometimes for negation I use uh, over bar sometimes I use this exclamation mark. Uh, so, you know uh, that is ok I think. Yeah, so, you see that this is this is what is the essential description of the uh, controller. It is a single state controller that means, it is purely combinational. It is simply generating the output signals load x in, load y in, swap uh, etcetera simply by looking at the values of the inputs. Okay. I think I missed something. Let us look at it again. This state loop, if start is asserted, then x, x, x input and y input are to be uh, loaded into uh, the x and y resistors at the end of this clock cycle. On the other hand, if start is not asserted, then it is a that means, we are in the uh, computational loop. Now, it is a situation whether now we look at whether y is whether the computation has finished or not that would be depend on whether y is already equal to 0 or not either y is equal to 0 or y is not equal to 0. Okay. If y is equal to 0, we will assert the ready signal, the controller will assert the ready signal and get ready for the next clock cycle. If y is not equal to 0, then we have two situations which are based, which depend on whether uh, x is less than y or whether x is not less than y. Okay. If x is less than y, anyway the controller will the next clock cycle will stay in the same state, but the uh, control signal swap will be asserted that is the output of the control controller. And if x is not less than y, then swap will be deasserted, swap will be set to 0 and we will go back to the same state. Yeah. So, I missed that. Uh, the use of y equal to 0, which is very important because every time in the beginning of the clock cycle while in the computational loop, you should the controller will check whether y has become 0 or not. If that, that happens to be the case, that means the output uh, the GCD is ready in x. So, the, the external system has to be told that we are ready with the result in x. If uh, y is not equal to 0, that means we are still not ready with the result. That means we have to uh, like compute further. So, that would depend on uh, that would depend on whether x is less than y or x is not less than y. If x is less than y, we should be telling the, uh, the controller should be telling the data path that it should swap or it should like in the other case it would not swap, it would subtract x subtract y from x and let y remain as it is that is a not swap case. Okay. So, that is a controller. This controller can be described in very log the this is the single state gcd controller so it's going to be purely combinational no role of clocks here combinational logic uh, can be described using as continuous assigned statements or as, uh, always blocks which are uh, not sensitive to the edges of the clock like this. So, initially the defaults, so I will specify that de default values for the all control signals are as follows load x in is 0, load y in is 0, zero swap is deasserted and so is ready. Okay. Now, depending on different situations, these values are to be like appropriate values of the this outputs of the controller are to, are to be uh, specified. So, if 
torque is asserted then, then we know that load x n will be 1 and load y n will be 1 will be asserted. Okay. That is the end of the case uh, start is asserted. If start is not asserted then we are in the con uh, computational loop and first we will check for whether y is equal to 0 or not. If y is equal to 0 then uh, we will further check else sorry else if if y is equal to 0 we will further check ok we will immediately s I mean uh, this this uh, necessarily means that ready signal has to be asserted in this clock cycle else if y is not equal to 0 then it would depend on whether x is less than y in which case the swap signal has to be asserted else the swap signal will be deasserted. Okay, letting x minus y subtract subtractors result go to x and y remain as it is. Okay. So, this is the logic for generation of this control signals and uh, output signal ready. Okay. So, this always block which is purely combinational you see that with the help of this default blocking assignments we have made sure that in for in every possible situation in de depending on the input value start y equal to 0 x less than y we have in all situations specified the values of these four signals load x in load y in swap and ready. Okay. Then default values are this and non default values happen to be like uh, specif uh, get specified for specific conditions. Okay. So, it is exactly it is a very long description of this particular uh, uh, state diagram a single state diagram you can check if start is, uh, is uh, asserted then load x in load y in are asserted if start is not 0 sorry if start is not asserted that is start is 0 in that else block it would depend on whether y is equal to 0 or it, if y is equal to 0 ready signals will be asserted and if y is not equal to 0 then it would further depend on x whether x is less than y or x is not less than y in which case swap will be asserted or deasserted which is described over here. Okay. If, y, if y is not equal to 0 then it would depend on whether x is less than y. Okay. So, it is x this captures that particular state um, single state GCD controller which is purely combinational. Okay. So, now uh, it is a bit surprising that this particular controller that we discussed although it had this uh, I mean we thought it, this is also an example of a synchronous system it, it is in general it is in fact go, indeed going to be an, a very typical finite state con machine. Uh, so, it is going to depend on the, the clock signal for synchronizing its state updates. And so, on. so, this was a controller which turned out to be a single, si uh, single state controller. So, just to illustrate that uh, like uh, most typically because we will have some protocol on the inputs, some protocol about the outputs, what the external uh, universe wants to s I mean how the external world wants to interact with this con this particular uh, computing machine special custom computing machine for say greatest common divisor computations. So, uh, we will just modify the specifications we will understand what is the limitation of that uh, single state controller machine and try and understand what would be the modification what could be the modification and how that modification of the specification would result in a slightly more general controller. So, uh, note that in this uh, this is the clock let us see uh, the waveforms sample scenario this is start signal uh, this 
we are using rising edge triggered discipline. So, the clock clock period uh, clock cycle starts at the rising edge and ends at the rising edge of the next clock period. So, let us say the start signal got uh, asserted some time here okay, and stayed asserted for whatever uh, let us say couple of clock cycles and got de asserted here. Okay. Now, we note that while uh, because the way the logic has been specified in this if else uh, statement the priority is given to start signal. If start is asserted, then we load inputs x input and y input into x and y resistors and we simply do not proceed to the computations until start is found to be deasserted. Right? So, if somebody the, uh, if, if the external uh, circuitry which is driving our GCD keeps the start signal high for a long enough time, hoping uh, like you know just feel believing that it has triggered the system. But until the start is deasserted, the computation won't start. Okay, while start is remains asserted, the system will, uh, the GCD subsystem will keep on like loading the in, uh, x and y resistors from the input. So the computation would not start. Computation would start only over here. Okay. only after start is goes low. So, at the end of towards the end of this clock cycle something will start happening in terms of swapping and subtracting and so on and it will take a few more clock cycles for uh, the data path to yield a result and the system would stay in the same state that is a that is what a behavior of uh, that is that is a purely combinational controller right. So, the, the drawback of this uh, single state controller is that it it does not respond to start at the earliest, it responds to start sort of like you know when the start goes down the computation begins. So, let us try and modify uh, work around this, this uh, like uh, little bit of problem. So, we would like to like to react to to rising edge of start as soon as possible. Okay. So, so the FSM will be in a, st a state called state idle. In state idle, we are the system will be essentially waiting for start to be asserted. Okay. So, the system would stay in this uh, controller would stay in this state as long as start is as long as start is 0. Okay. Moment start becomes 1, the system would go to a new state, let us call it state loop and in this state it will do the computation. Okay. So, you notice that moment to start becomes uh, when start becomes when it is noticed by the controller, controller would have been in that state start idle state, but it is going to in the next clock cycle it is going to go to a new state. In that new state the controller will start responding to uh, like will start will ignore uh, like the start signal and would simply like base its actions uh, like based on the status from the data path that is whether y is equal to 0 or not that is when the whether the computation is done or not or whether if computation is not yet done whether x is less than y. So, which is so which is when we should swap or we should not swap. Okay. So, that is what is the interesting things are going to happen in this uh, state state loop. Okay. Let us see what exactly happens in the state loop. So, this is the state idle. the system controller stays here as long as start is 0. When start is found out to be asserted, the system moves to a state called state loop 
is an arbitrary name that we have given to it. In this state, uh, again, first uh, we are going to look at this controller would look at whether y is equal to 0 or not, not or y not equal to 0. If y is equal to 0, then that means the computation is done. So, it is a case, it is a situation for to wait for the next start trigger. So, immediately we will assert a ready flag and in the next clock cycle we will go to the state idle waiting for the start to be asserted. Okay. If y is not equal to 0 that means the computer computation has to continue then it would depend on whether x is less than y or whether x is whether it is not the case that is x is not less than y. In either case we know the computation has to carry be done for one more iteration at least. So, we go back into I mean we go back to the same state to I, I mean you can see that we are still in the computation. So, we will go back to the same state, but uh, different control signals will be generated. So, here swap will be asserted and here swap will be deasserted. So, it is essentially like we, we just split that particular earlier uh, single state controller removed the uh, created to one extra state to respond to which is whose job is to only kind of wait for the start signal and as main state which is which is where the computation is happening. So, now we see that this kind of controller will ensure that the start signals is responded to as soon as possible. We do not have to as in the previous case we would not wait for the start signal to die and then the computation will begin. Okay. This is the power of uh, finite state machine just a, a minor changes in the finite state machine. Note that data path would not have changed at all. It just the way it just that we have chosen a different protocol which decided to react to start uh, like focus on start signal in a state idle state which is the initial state and uh, once a start signal is noticed we immediately move into a different state. If we had stayed back in the same state priority to start would still would have been there and it would have uh, like you know inhibited this swap and subtract operations. So, by moving into a different state we have sort of uh, like you know help the system controllers ignore the start signal. Note that in this particular state there is no role of start signal. Okay, it completely ignores the start signal. It only depends on whether y is equal to 0 in which case it is going to know that computation is finished, ready signal is asserted and if y is not equal to 0 it would depend further on whether x is less than y or x is not less than y. Okay.